on the need to have an inclusive government from the perspective of the youth. Over time, we're told that the youth are the leaders of tomorrow, but it seems as though tomorrow eludes the youths. Now, from a national perspective, would there be need for legal documents or a framework to institutionalize what our nation, Nigeria, refers to as its youth policy? Can Nigerian youths look at projections on paper and say, okay, I'm eligible for this. I can get involved in this. What direction do we tailor the leadership criteria we're looking to mold and imbibe in young persons? Now, to better expand this conversation, I'm joined by the program manager from Youth Hub Africa, Olushegun Madupin, who is in our studios this morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you, sir, and thanks for having me. Uh, we also appreciate you for choosing to grant us audience as we look to dialogue on this perspective. L let's start basically with youth in the Nigerian context. Mm. Well, when people talk about being a youth in Nigeria, especially in hindsight of what is obtainable in leadership, age becomes a very key criteria. Mm. Uh, this has been so for over long and persons will continue to ask when do the youth now become the leaders of tomorrow mm. how do you look to approach this conversation from that perspective this morning oh well so uh thank you once again i think the issue about about the youth is about the future of nigeria if i can put it that way and whenever i'm i'm no longer a youth uh as a matter of fact and when we had to talk about uh the status and who a young person is in nigeria uh, I think is something that everybody should should be prepared to to contribute to and to listen to because uh, there is no future without without the young people. Uh, whatever we do with this uh, thriving population now is what will determine if Nigeria will exist tomorrow or not, or in in the next few years or not. Uh, let let me let me let me look at the books because we are guided uh, by books talking about policies frameworks. Uh, 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 conventions and and that we have ratified over the years or we sign on to as a people as a government uh, the overarching policy that that determine who a young person is in Nigeria is a national youth policy uh, funny enough this discussion is coming at the at the very table time at the time when the national youth policy uh, is undergoing review uh, the national youth policy made us to know that a youth is between 15 and 29 years uh, so many so many people have kicked against it from here and there uh, probably the the people who were cut off after 29 maybe the 35 the 40 etc uh, having it in mind that the african youth charter plays a youth at 18 to 35 and i think before before uh before the 2019 version of the national youth policy the existing youth policy that came in uh, uh around 2009 uh around 2009 also where or no the 1999 around the time uh obasanjo came in that national policy pitched the youth at 40 and so we can understand why people are now saying it should be at least maybe 35 instead of 29 as the case may be now but again uh you talk about participatory if we are not participating in determining who the youth is or who the uh, young people are in nigeria we can't be crying foul when some people gather themselves together and decide the the age limit of young people is 29 which of course is a position that i favor another discussion for another, another day yeah so uh the national youth policy determine who young people is and if you look at that that band of uh, uh of our population that is about uh 70 percent of the entire nigerian population about 151 million uh people in nigeria and it and uh Many elders across Africa has come to say, man, this this thriving population uh, is going to be a plus for us if we do the right thing. And if we don't do the right thing, this is going to make us to implode. And I will explain why that is. Uh, Africa is considered as a predominantly young continent, not in terms of when we became a continent, but in terms of the fact that most of the global young people are in Africa, and most of them are in sub-Saharan Africa, and the huge population of these numbers are in Nigeria. And so, 
uh, if we look at what Europe and the West are, so, uh, are trying to do now, opening their doors for scholarship and all those things for, uh, for people to be able to migrate to those places, is to be able to cushion uh, the effect of demographic uh, uh, of, of a negative demography on their own side because their own working population is reducing while uh, the, the dependent population who are already retired is expanding in Europe. Our po working population is huge why the dependent population is uh, a little bit narrow it therefore means we have the the working power to be able to sustain our society if we give them the tool it will give them all what they need right and so that is why the national youth policy is a very good document that aggregates all the government plans all the government policies all the government uh all the government framework whatever the departments and the mdas and the ministries are doing for young people is aggregated in a single policy and uh i'm happy that is only for uh, four years and is due for review this year and as i'm talking to you is already being reviewed there is a there is a national uh, ministerial committee and I'm, I'm happy because the one for 20, uh, 2019 that our organization youth of africa took leadership on uh it, it, we only had go a little government interest uh but i must also give it to the federal minister of youth at that time they start there they gave it their war but the war might just be little in, in in a big ocean but now you have the minister minister herself saying see i i don't want this to be ready somewhere in june i want it to be ready as soon as possible and i think she's meeting with the committee uh, twice every week that i can tell you because our, our organization represented by my service uh, I'm, on, I'm on i'm on that committee right and so if to get it right to say at the beginning of this administration these are the these are the indices these are the truths and these are the things to focus on on you we, we don't want uh, young people don't want handouts uh, young people don't want handouts young people don't want you to plan for them there is no planning for young people without them and so this is why it is very expedient that as the uh, Tinubu administration is taking is is taking on now, uh, and I pray uh, he he do well and be able to give us uh, an enviable nation that we all we all wish for. Uh, it is good that we also have this new policy, uh, the review policy, take effect to be able to uh, capture all the all the nuances and 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 things that we never even plan for. For instance, uh, insurgency has not been our thing. If you look back at 20 years ago, but it's right there to stay with us. And we also need to plan for young people so that young people will not become uh, will not fall there. They want them on this side. Now, ahead of the review of the document in terms of the framework for a national youth policy, yeah. is also planning which you have mentioned very frequently in your mm -hmm. comments this morning mm -hmm. on planning from the angle of a national exercise, mm -hmm. the national population and housing census, which yeah. eluded the last administration mm -hmm. under President Mohamed mm -hmm. Buhari. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that should also be an area of priority mm -hmm. to afford us with the demographics and statistics of? The youths we have in Nigeria, yes, we know we make up 42% of mm -hmm. the global youths from the continent, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in terms of our youth demographics, mm -hmm. how important is it for the President Bola Metinwa administration to embark on a census to give it the informed data and statistics mm -hmm. to better plan? Yeah, so I, I, I look at it this way. If you look at the trajectory of the present administration, uh, uh, one thing that I think everybody will agree is that uh the administration seems to uh be interested in putting some key things in place talking about uh a consumer a consumer credit, loan, scheme. A credit scheme talking about uh student, a, loan, a student loan and all those things it will show you that uh, these guys want to do something so my opinion is if you see a man who is willing to build something uh you should support him to to build it uh, uh to build it uh as as the case may be but he would not be able to make success of that structure if he does not use uh if he does not do it in an evidence-based and so if you are talking about con consumer consumer uh credit schemes how how, how many 
people do you think you can cater for in a year and that is what you are talking about and say so let's uh let's look at our data again uh, by the time i tell i give you data here by the time i get to the to the main road you will see people who want to contest with my data it therefore means uh uh the people are wary of data in in the in, of data in this part of the world because they believe that people permutate data and the data integrity is rightly not there and so the onus is on this administration to ensure that these uh sensors come up uh and and timely also don't let us put the card before the horse uh and let it be timely and so that the data that come the data that come from there the information can be used for planning and for for that purpose and uh it, it, it's also rightly in time in time with the with the review of the national youth policy you see so that at the end of the day we we'll know how many young people are we even planning for how many young people are we budgeting for uh if, if you if you try to get the data and statistic of the unemployed you will see variance here five percent at at uh, q3 of 2023 you will see another one that will say six percent we go to Nigeria Bureau of Statistics. You, uh, uh, you see another leaning that you, you are almost uh, very confused, and they are from the government, right? Who were supposed to take their data and statistics from the NBS, the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics, but they are giving conflicting figures, as the case may be. So, what shows us, or what evidence then do they have to show that their planning will not be skewed? If the data is skewed, how then will planning not be skewed? We talk about unemployment. There are still the underemployed uh, folks right out there. Uh, it, from January till now, uh, whatever a, a man's salary is, will not be able to take him, take him uh, 20 days or 30 days. And he's employed. So he's no longer gainfully employed. Meaning I'm employed, gainfully employed today. I might not be gainfully employed by next There's year. No job security. There's no job security. So these are the factors that the National Youth Policy will consider. Consider some emerging issues. Uh, for instance, climate change is big on our face. Uh, it's raining in Abuja and we are still sweating. I've never seen that before. And so at the end of the day, you know, things are changing. We have to factor that in. Uh, we are talking about uh, fossil fuel moving uh, moving from, from to clean, clean energy uh, and, and all that. We also have to look at clean jobs, green jobs, and look at how can we diversify and make sure our young people are able to say, look, look at it. When you look at whatever uh a, 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 a product we have and inflow we have from from the tech uh, uh community right now in nigeria is being driven solely by young people well, mostly by young people who came back when there was an enabling environment the, the national youth policy moving forward should be able to say hey this is how we should put in place a, an enabling environment so that all those tech hub in lagos in Kano or wherever they exist it will be evenly distributed it will come into every cities in nigeria and and we'll be able to take care of our uh of, of of those young people living in the remote settings now whilst you've looked to highlight some of the key modalities that need to be in place for developments to affect the youth population mm -hmm. of nigeria my concern listening to you is on the timeline mm -hmm. you have reiterated the minister's drive to ensure it happens between the end of May, we're in yeah. the last week, and mm. before the end of June, how is government and the MDA's concerns preparing to meet with this timeline? <sighs> I know you're a member of the committee as well, so do well to give us preview information. Well, uh, your concern is, is also my concern. Uh, while I'm part of the committee, uh, I will speak as Youth of Africa and uh, as Olusha Gumerupin right here. <laughs> uh, yes, because I will not seek to take a brief for, for the community or for the government uh, one, way, one way or the other. We feel uh, this should not be rushed. If it's an exercise that needs to be done, let it be done uh, uh, in order and let it be far-reaching. Let's carry the media uh, along uh, because, see, the impact of the media in our development agenda can never be overemphasized. Uh, you, you, even the media might not be able to imagine its own impact. 
in, in achieving a, sustain, a sustainable development, right? Uh, one thing that we also know is uh, reaching the necessary people that should be rich, most especially youth groups in the hinterlands, even uh, talking about 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 uh, the nomads, the young nomads who are in the bush with their cattle, uh, the fishermen on the high sea, every one of them need to be rich and their opinion capture. And this is what we are advocating for and say, see, let's do this thing the right way. I will tell you. Nigeria government or the uh, Nigeria as it is does not lack the, the uh, does not lack the platform to reach those people we are talking about. Uh, there 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 are youth groups in states who are already mapped and are registered with the Federal Ministry of Youth or the State Ministry of Youth. It's simple. It's to send volunteers to their leaders or their leaders to take the message down to the community and let them sit under a tree and we, we guide them on what to ask or what to do and what not to do, right? Town hall engagement. Town hall engagement. Uh, yes, we call it town hall. It might even be in a canoe on the water. Uh, I remember in 2018, what we did with uh, the old National Youth Policy as an organization, because we have very little uh, funding that year, what we did was to put a call for volunteer organizations from across Nigeria. Funny enough, 56 organizations volunteered, and we did, uh, we sent them a toolkit guideline. This is the question, this is the discussion, this is what to capture, and all that. Out of the 56 organizations, uh, 24 sent back reports. 24 sent back reports, meaning 24 held review and sent back reports. We put the report together and forwarded it to the Federal Ministry of Youth. Now, that is the, li the little youth of Africa at one corner of our map, right? If the Federal Ministry said, I want 1,000 uh youth focus organization and group or even ten thousand today i want you to volunteer to and we will give you a certificate of participation at the end of the day do you know what will happen we will have so many voices diverse voices and because we can't you can't just sit us in the corner of abuja or lagos and you are saying uh so what is the best age for young people it will not work i will tell you why the pwd uh, people with disabilities if you look at them because youth in nigeria is not uh, a, an homogeneous group is not just one group and so when you look at pwd which is one of the youth groups th their education mostly starts a little bit late if you look at it that way the education starts uh by the uh, by the time i'm done with primary school uh someone who is in uh, crutches or someone who is visually impaired will just be starting the education before because for the family to even uh, wrap their mind around the fact that this boy is visually impaired it will take time so meaning his development and his ability to also contribute to his community development might be around 35 or maybe even 40 even 45 and so we need to hear from those people and then we need to recalibrate uh what our youth age will be just to buttress your point yeah. as well we're also seeing similar discussions on this age bracket in terms of the conversations on extending the retirement age for judges mm. the retirement age for professors the mm -hmm. retirement age of teachers mm -hmm. uh, and person talk about the late development ideology in nigeria that mm -hmm. uh, some persons don't really find their foot in nigeria owing to uh, our cost of living crisis up until they are in their late 40s mm. uh, you know on a light time people will say life begins at 40. Uh, do you think in light of this debate on the other mm. hand of how late most nigerians find their foot in light this 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 age bracket thing is due of a review in itself so so let's let's be let's be clear to ourselves i have an uncle who is a retired judge uh, i think at 25 26 30 he's already had a house that he didn't even build uh, with so much effort or with so much stress. Some of them come out of university and a podio is waiting for them to own. Jobs are waiting for them to uh, to take on, right? So they had it nice. So when it's time for their retirement, they should be cool, just proceed on retirement. But let's talk about the realities of now. If, uh, 
I had it I had it nicely all true. Uh but I know some people don't have it nice or true also. Then we shouldn't throw a blanket uh a blanket uh bracket on top I say let's increase the age. So if you increase the age uh, the the team youth population who don't have a job or somebody who is also aspiring to be a high court judge, when will his time come? You say you are the uh, you are the leaders of tomorrow. When will their time come? When will their tomorrow come? Will tomorrow ever come for them? And so I think we should not shift the needle. At the end of the day, there should be programs, there should be plan, and I know the uh, the, the strategy studies in just needs. Is a Nipsey or Nip is a Nips. very good yeah. plan for some of them who are going to enter re uh, uh, retirement will find a way to still be able to tap into their knowledge, their understanding and, and what they have to offer. And Nigeria have a dynamic way of still getting, bringing them back to be able to contribute to the society one way or the other. But we shouldn't uh, share away from, from the fact that uh, the system will be over bloated by the time you increase that band, uh, you increase that band up there and there are so many people so many gloats down here who want to get into the system and they couldn't so i think that argument uh should not even happen for a well-meaning nigeria in the first place uh the, the the focus is go and rest why don't you want to rest go and rest let the young people who have the energy be able to contribute to your rest for significant and meaningful growth of the country yeah. but now the challenge with the young persons uh, i saw a number of posts about young people being less bothered about critical issues of national building, especially mm -hmm. with regards to the economy and how things are happening in the country. Yeah. First off, there's the allegation that many young persons in Nigeria do not even know that there is a national youth policy. True. Is there any effort on the part of Youth Hope for better sensitization? Okay. Before I come to that, number one, their inability, uh, their, their ignorance, right, uh, I don't think is totally their fault. Uh, is the uh, it should be the fault of because of course it's the responsibility of the policymakers, uh, the key stakeholders to ensure that the people who we are creating policies for they are addressed and they are aware of what policy is created for them. And I will still tell you that these things are not expensive to get them to know because we have NOA, we have all sort of structures on ground. We have we have people who ride bike into communities. Uh, LEA is a local local education authorities correct people who knows every nooks and credit bring them together and pass this information to them and say see take the information to the grassroots right uh when is election when election is coming we know how to get to the remotest of four of all places so why is it that taking uh the information about national youth policy we cannot get it to those uh to those locations right now uh government should leverage on on the structure that it has and it will make a lot of sense but coming back a little bit and saying uh i agree with you so many young people are not even interested in what you are talking about right but it's also our responsibility to get them to be interested in it and because uh we can't shave your head behind you you have to be in the room you have to be in the room to make your contribution if you don't get into the room what happened is that some few people will decide what will govern your life and your existence for the next four years and that is why we will continue to appeal to them and we are doing that through social media and every other opportunity that we have uh, we are doing that by uh, by sending me into the studio uh, to come and sit down with you this morning to ensure that as many young people as possible they hear about this now there are reasons why some of these young people are losing interest when they play they repose their interest on the system in the past what has that trans uh, uh, uh what are that translated to the system does not give them something that is commensurate with their hope and their aspiration and so they just felt man i can't be bothering myself so they sit uh, uh behind their uh, keypad on twitter and no tweet and when i don't care about whatever you talk about about the national youth policy and etc but like i said 
is it it's our responsibility to reach out to them i will expect the government through the minister of youth to call uh, uh, uh a media party for instance and get advn uh all the other media platforms uh both both uh, both, both uh, the traditional media the digital ones and all them put them down the bloggers the influencers sit them down and communicate some of this to them and let them run with it let people be aware the awareness is not a one street thing there are so many times uh, so many ways to be done there are town criers in our communities that we listen to every now and then right uh when we were in the villages and so town criers can also make those announcements uh the council of others the council of traditional rulers we can reach out to them right and uh, I mean, there are structures. There are structures. We are not a nobody in Nigeria. We have it figured out. Only that we probably don't want to explore what we have set in place. But if we are ready to make it work, we we'll explore those those platforms. And lastly, for Youth of Africa, uh, I think immediately the the review exercise started. Uh, one thing we did, we did flyers. Uh, uh and and which we, made me privy to the information that's why ah, i sent the invites just to okay. also complement so, your efforts thank you was so we we did flyers and we shared the flyers out uh and i was happy shortly after then then the federal ministry also made a lot of flyers that has the link and we're asking ourselves what else can be done what else can be done we are asking that question what else can be done I will, for instance, plead with the Honorable Minister if they can uh, extend the time that this could happen, the review could happen, so that it will capture more people's opinion. See, we have the churches, we have the mosque. After the mosque service, can we ask all the young people to wait somewhere there and somebody from the National Orientation Agency or somebody from an NGO, somebody from the Ministry of Youth or somebody from the State Ministry of Youth or from the National Youth Council who is even a leader in this process to speak with the young people. Uh, within the church, can I go to my pastor and say, Pastor, I need to talk to the youth just for 20 minutes. And I tell them, I want to take your opinion. How many of you has a phone that can scan a QR, QR code? Scan it and answer these questions. How many of you has the phone that cannot uh, do a QR code? Then just tell me what you need and I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll be writing it down. There is a way the my world survey was done in 2015 before 2015 and those are the things that culminated into the 17 sdg goals we went into the market uh, etc etc and as the data was coming in on the platform on the my world survey platform you will see the country countries that are leading in the number of responses and so uh, the, the 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 head of government didn't come out uh, didn't just sleep on one side of the bed and came up the following morning with 17 goals they were the thought of people i'm sure if that has to be done in 2030 or 2031 now you will see that insecurity will be part of the 17 goals you will see exactly. that uh, so many it reflects the current challenges of the people yeah. so let's go that route Let's go that route. I think the, the minister should, should extend the time, maybe give us another uh, two, three, four, five months, and, and, and let's explore all opportunities, and there will be win-win situation. Now, some of the challenges, I, if I understand you correctly, yeah. are now with even the access to internet and the technology survey of some of the youth. Yeah. You mentioned some of the hard-to-reach areas, the hinterlands where... Yeah. It might be facilitated by town hall movements mm -hmm. now in collaboration with the ministry of youth development yeah. uh, are there some certain strategies on how best to go about obtaining these data in light of these challenges with internet penetration and also technological savviness of the youth in question mm, i think that has been looked at uh, uh one of one of the meetings two weeks ago uh, i remember uh one of the development partner was hammering on it and say uh i think we need to look at how to make this very inclusive to get more uh more people more people on board and get more opinions so that is currently being being looked at and uh maybe also this discussion is a wake-up call to to our organization to also maybe go back to the organization and say uh okay what can we what innovation can we think out is sms possible for instance uh almost everybody that has uh a touch device phone can send an sms and it will say answer this question do you want this uh they will answer 
yes do you want that a or b or whatever i know if it has to be done by an individual organization like us it will be very expensive if the minister called the minister of communication and said please can you help me secure a partnership with all the major uh, platforms and the uh, national telecommunication commission is it possible for that sms to be possible uh, to happen i don't know uh, i also don't know what the what the financial uh, a body will be to those organizations i don't know but i know to be able to do that you are talking about you are talking about uh thousands of usd to for an organization like us to be able to facilitate that sms thing because we've explored it for some other uh, other options and we have to run from it but i think uh using radio alone we can achieve much now, in case you're just joining us, you're right on our flagship program on ADBN Television. The discussion of the day is on the national youth policy. Now, whilst there is a plan to review the current provisions of a framework for the youth population in Nigeria, owing to our demography as 42% contributors to the global youth population, it means that Nigeria needs to take more time to treat its youth population with intent in terms of projections and planning to boost productivity in the studio this morning the program manager youth hub africa olushego madupin has expatiated on the high level interagency and interministerial meeting that is saddled with this responsibility of making revisions to the current existing framework we'll take a break and when we return more questions on the timeline for this and how youth can be better sensitized on the provisions of the national youth policy would come to you. Do well to stay with us. Well, thanks for staying with us on the program this morning as we come to the final quarter of an hour on the discussion of national youth policy. I still have with me in the studio the program manager, Youth Hub Africa, Olushegu Madupi, who has elaborated quite largely on the need for the review of this document. But our next perspective now is on getting more hands on deck my question to you now would be uh, what are some strategies that can be deployed to ensure an expanded stakeholder collaboration for the benefit of this reviewed national youth policy mm, thanks so uh i think uh, maybe before now we are, we are not we are not thinking deep enough and this kind of discussion for instance has opened our mind to say hey guys uh, uh think through this and think out of the box uh and and all that uh some of the strategies might also be uh, like I, I think i mentioned initially to 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 work with uh media to work with media uh, if the minister will consider a, a breakfast meeting with media uh, or, a, or a, a media party so that every young people they are hearing about this on the media platforms uh, as much as possible uh the fact that adbn is interested in this discussion uh is 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 something something to to uh, to keep us thinking how we can get more media uh we can get more of media into this go to social media and we begin to see conversations around this alone is a beautiful thing uh every one of us who are on social media or who are wherever we are we also have rules attached to us as a do in the village i still have younger ones in the village who send me uh prayer on whatsapp every morning when they send that prayer can i send them the link and also tell them for other people who don't who cannot uh, do the link can you help them to register on the uh, to to register their thoughts on the link and so is a is an ongoing concern and i think uh it will only get better actually now another angle to this conversation is on the implementation mm -hmm. monitoring and evaluation mm -hmm. beyond reviewing this document on the national youth policy mm -hmm. uh, how can there be holistic approach to the implementation mm. the evaluation and the assessment of the policy's mm. intention mm. Uh, many people has has come out to say uh, for so long that nigeria's issue or the challenge with nigeria as a nation or as a state is not uh, the absence of policy or absence of framework 
or afresh of absence of intention or even the capacity but the absence or the political now the issue is the political will to see these things through and to make sure they work uh part of part of the ongoing discussion also is uh the implementation beyond just uh reviewing of the policies to have an implementation plan uh and also to have a monitoring and evaluation plan and uh i think uh, with this in place uh there, there, there will be a group or a body that will be saddled with the responsibility for seeing the day-to-day -day activity on that policy to ensure that so many stakeholders contribute to it uh I, I, so in the in the implementation so many ideas and so many ways this could happen uh there will be committees subcommittees and all that to monitor every every area of the policies uh, of the policy to ensure that uh, all the people that are concerned the stakeholders uh, the critical stakeholders contribute to it for instance we are in a media house and uh part of the policy might say uh, we want to create one million media jobs in the next four years uh adbn how many are you going to contribute another media xyz media how many are you going to, uh, going to contribute KYZ media, how many are you going to contribute? By the people, uh, by the by the time you make your you make your commitment and you share with us your idea of how you can contribute into that, uh, maybe people 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 understudy you uh, of what you do in the studio room. Uh, study the camera handlers, study the the linear editors, the sound engineers, and all that, and they also can can get involved and can get uh, can get engaged, and through that they can get jobs, right? And at the end of the four years or five years, we evaluate and we see that indeed the media promise one million jobs, they have been able to create uh, two million jobs. And that would be a beautiful way to, to measure this. And so from now, we need to be thinking of the implementation. Then we need to uh, be thinking of resource mobilization, which is a critical part of it. Resource mobilization, the resources don't have to come from the government alone. And as as, as citizens and the corp individual citizens, the corporate citizens, what do we have to give into this in terms of resources? Uh, and you you'll be shocked at at how minute uh, contributions can make that change, right? By the time an individual who is uh, uh, a just one man uh, photographer employ a young boy, uh, train him and put put him right there and that boy is able to start alone and we capture the data into the into the monitoring uh, vault and we'll be able to see her from this community one boy has become a cameraman and now he's earning for himself and he's able to also support his own community and so the resource mobilization is very key to get the private sector involved the private sector engagement is key uh the resources are around every one of the private sector entity who uh, hold the society a responsibility uh as a corporate citizen and we need to underline that and let everybody understand as a private concern you have to contribute it, it, it shouldn't be stressful actually as simple as it can be you can contribute and there are so many ways to that maybe again the committee might also look at okay how do we strengthen even the private sector to contribute because you can have you can have the money or you might not have the money but you have the means and you don't even know your means can translate into a b c d right for 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 uh for job creation or for whatever we want peace building or for uh for women and girls empowerment gender related issue uh for for climate change issue uh you might not know if you have the capacity to grow to grow flowers and we want we want to green the whole street the whole environment uh, to be able to to be able to manage uh, manage uh climate change and all that you want to contribute flowers and you say every month i can contribute three seeds of uh so, so trees young people will come and take it go and plant it in four years let's come and see what the result will be will be now, now just to highlight in the concluding two minutes or less 
the role of the citizens now mm. you've talked about private pu public partnership yeah. but on the accountability of government there is the perceived fear that if this national youth policy is not gazetted and passed into law mm -hmm. there'll be no legal window by which the office of the citizen can hold government accountable that that, that that is a huge question that i've also known from uh, uh from way back on these and uh, our position is that the term for the for the lawmakers in nigeria is four years and for instance we are pushing we've been pushing the amendment of the universal basic education law uh act sorry we want it to be amended for increased funding and etc cetera, etc cetera. we push it uh, uh about about 10 years ago by the time it scaled through the senate under under saraki uh dogara the lower house could not pass it then that time finished when the next time co uh, came we push it so long before the four year uh it got to a point now the next four years we have to come and start all over again and so if you make this document uh an act of the national assembly when it's time for review like this the review might take forever and it will never happen so I think they, uh, it should be left uh, uh, as 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 a policy document the way it is, and not made an act of the National Assembly, so that uh, the review will be easy and spontaneous. We can review it easy, uh, easily and make it to be a live document. And lastly, uh, and very importantly, so is the fact that we should also look at how to firm up. Uh, around the framework to ensure that citizen participation is very uh, uh, is, is right where it should be so that we will continue to hold the government accountable to say see you say you will do this please go ahead and do it uh yeah there, there are so many ways we can do this actually well, it's been an elaborate conversation. I'm hopeful that some of the takeaways as uh, the respective stakeholders are listening to the program and for our follow-up interviews and also engagements in line with this initiative,